Hello, people. Good morning. It's going to be interesting preaching to real people instead of pictures. We serve some style today in your leaflets. Please follow along. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be the kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Exodus. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on the right and on the left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. And the more, at the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. The word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 114. We'll read it responsibly by half verse. Hallelujah! When Israel came out of Egypt, Judah became God's sanctuary. The sea beheld it and fled. 
The mountains skip like rams. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? You mountains that you skipped like rams. Tremble, O earth, at the presence at the presence of the Lord. Who turned the hard rock into a pool of water? The epistle is from Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord, and those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in the honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whenever we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought, before, brought to him. And as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children, and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. 
Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning again. Good morning. It's nice to see you here today after this long absence we've had. And I've been sort of reflecting upon what's been happening lately as we move through these last few months, especially during this pandemic time. And what you see, what we see is how the pandemic has sort of exposed our country. It's exposed our society. On the one hand, we've seen some really good people stepping up. The doctors and nurses, people in the medical field, the EMTs, working with under the probably the worst of conditions, doing what they can do, lacking the necessary personal protective equipment, lacking ventilators, yet still going in and trying to be with patients who are basically in comas, and some would die of this disease. We now call grocery workers and those essential. Right now they're essential. Will they be essential next year? That's the question for us. We complain when they ask for a raise above minimum wage. But right now, they're essential. And we have to explore what does that mean for each and every one of us. We have seen tensions rise in this country. People of color are angry. We may not understand. It's difficult. But it is what is happening. And it's happening across the country. It doesn't matter where you are at. People are exploring what has gone with on. Why have we gotten to this point? 400 years ago, the first Africans were brought across the ocean to be made slaves. Over 60 years ago, civil rights was passed, voting rights was passed, and yet still today, we struggle with our relationships with one another and with people of color. And not just people of color, it's been interesting. Jane and I have been taking this attending uh, at Dover, up in uh, Christ Church in Dover, the Episcopal Church is learning uh, called Sacred, it's called This is Sacred Ground. The Episcopal Church has put this out. It's a series of videos we watch and readings, and then we get together in small groups and discuss, we've been getting together in small groups, socially distanced with masks on, discussing these issues. And in sacred ground, we've learned so much that many of us never even heard about in our history books. How many of you know about sundown towns? Got one back there. Two. Sundown towns. You know what sundown towns were about? They were towns in which people of color Jews, Chinese, Japanese, anybody who is considered undesirable had to be out of town by sundown. It brought up an interesting thing for me because when I was over in England years ago, we went to Chester, went to the Chester Cathedral, 
And upstairs in Chesapeake, they have this little sign. Any Welshman caught within the walls of Chester, once, once the gates have been closed, could be killed. I have Welsh ancestors. We had to get out of town. Chester, England was a sundown town against Welshmen. And these sundown towns still have many of the same laws on their books today. We have a lot to talk about. A lot of things which is tearing the nation apart and pulling us into directions we really don't want to go. But these conversations, although had, are necessary. I've learned so much in just the last few weeks in this, we are the, the sacred ground talks. I've learned so much about some of these things which are still endemic to our country's work, life. And I read today's gospel, Jesus asked, Peter asked, how, how many times should I forgive somebody? Seven times, or 70 times seven. You have to continue to forgive, to be open to one another, to listen to one another, to have deep conversations and not be afraid to do so. It is, it's, we, have a, we have such an interesting, 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 I in, emphasize, interesting history. And it's not just African Americans, although they have been probably on the very, pushed along the furthest. But I was surprised to see how we treated South, people from Southern Europe. You know, the Southern European countries like Italy, the Braz Pizza? Chinese who gave us the buffet? Japanese? Can't have sushi. Greeks, there's nothing better than a Greek pizza, trust me. But these were people who were discriminated against because they were others. Irish, every year on March 17th, what do we do? We drink green beer. It's yucky, but they do it. We celebrate St. Patrick's Day. And it was interesting to learn how the Irish, in order to be accepted within society, moved themselves from being down here to being up here by pushing others down. That's how they got to where they were. How a Kennedy became president. We need to have these conversations. We cannot avoid it. We need to learn about what it means for racial justice, reconciliation amongst all of us, not just a few, not just the Democrats, not just the Republicans, but every single one of us. When we interred the Japanese during World War II in concentration camps, basically, and their husbands and sons went off to fight in Europe, you can read about, I think it's called the 444 Division. The most decorated army division were Japanese Americans, African American soldiers who went across in both World War I and World War II, the World War II African Americans came home and were denied, denied the basic rights to get home loans from the GI Bill at the time. 
and we wonder why there's anger in the streets? It's still happening. It is still happening. But anger is not enough. We need to have those deep, difficult, uncomfortable conversations about who we are as a people. We need to look at ourselves. I looked at myself. I have seen, my, I'm a white male. And somebody, I hit the trifecta when I went to seminary. White male, married, kids. Privilege is all over. I don't, I never thought of it that way. I don't think of myself as sort of, I still had to take the test and things, but then I listened to my female colleagues and I listened to my colleagues of color. And their road to seminary was not as easy as my road to seminary. My road to seminary was paved a little bit different, basically just because of what you see here. And that is unfair. That is unfair to them, it's unfair to me, it's unfair to us. How do we have these kinds of conversations? How do we speak to one another about these kinds of issues that touch our lives each and every day? Even down here in Harrington, you're not immune. You may think sometimes you are, you may think, well, we're out here in rural Delaware. Nobody's gonna bother us out here, but truly, if we are community, if we are church, what hurts one hurts us all. We are all in the same place. Basically, we're all kind of in the same boat. Except part of the boat's got some leaks. And now we're being asked to try to plug in those leaks, help one another to plug in those leaks. This past week, Richard Rohr, I don't know if you know him, he's a Franciscan uh, priest, and he has this, uh, website called Center for Action and Contemplation. And this past week, all the meditations, daily meditations, were all about forgiveness and restorative justice. That's more than what Jesus says to forgive 70 times over. It's also the need for restorative justice, restoring who we are. That restorative justice is not just for the person who has been victim, who is the victim, but also the one who is the victimizer. We all need restorative justice. What happened in South Africa? The Truth and Reconciliation Committees after the fall of apartheid is what Richard Rohr is talking about. And I've got this quote. This is, this is what I, I like this one. It's from uh, it's Brian Stevenson. Have you heard the name Brian Stevenson? Who's heard the, saw the movie Just Mercy? There we go, we got a couple. Read the book Just Mercy. Brian Stevenson was born here in Delaware. He's a lawyer. And he went down, he, he was it's all about the prison system. And he went in and, and got somebody off of death row, tried to get some people off of death row who were unjustly convicted. And they were mainly African American men. But he wrote this. We are all implicated when we allow other people to be mistreated. An absence of compassion can corrupt the decency of a community, a state, a nation. Fear and anger can make us vindictive and abusive, unjust and unfair, until we all suffer from the absence of mercy and we condemn ourselves as much as we victimize others. The closer we get to mass incarceration and extreme levels of punishment, the more I believe it's necessary to recognize that we all need mercy. We all need justice, and perhaps 
We all need some measure of unmerited grace. Some measure of unmerited grace. The grace in which God shows to each and every one of us. None of us are perfect. None of us stands any higher or any lower in the eyes of God. So I like to say the ground at the foot of the cross is level ground. And that is the ground upon which we all stand. The level ground at the foot of the cross. That is God's love in action. God's love in the broken body of Christ on the cross. God's love shown to us. Shown to us each and every day. But we, as I said, I went by a church the other day. Had those, you know, those church signs, who, they got little sayings on them, which is cute. You know, you're, you're doomed, whatever. One sign said, God is in control. I said, why are we putting all the burden on God? When it is we whom God placed on this planet, we whom God gave life to, we whom God has shown us the way through Jesus Christ, we are the ones. God may be in control, but we are the worker bees. We are called to restorative justice, peace, and showing unmerited grace, even if it's hard for each of us to do. Sometimes it will feel like you're swimming upstream against the tide or the well, falls. But you think about salmon do it all the time. Unless there's a grizzly bear out there grabbing them. But you do it. They get over the fall. It may feel hard. It may feel difficult. But we can do it. When we do it together. You're going to be challenged. This, is, this, sa this sacred ground stuff is on a diocesan level. Your bishop, Bishop Brown, is talking about this. If you've been reading the Delaware newsletters, you'll be reading about this. You'll hear it at your conventions. Your representatives to convention will hear about this. Church leaders are being asked to talk about this difficult subject. You are going to be challenged by this, whether you know it or not. It's coming to a town near you. What are you going to do? How is St. Stephen's going to react? I'm not your priestly leader. I'm your supply. Here every week, doing my best to preach a little bit. Bless God's cookies. And maybe, just maybe, say a few things and maybe come to heart of you. Who knows? So the work is yours. The work is yours. And maybe it's time now to start thinking how that work is going to be accomplished as we move forward, as we eventually, eventually come to an end to this pandemic, whenever that will happen. Because even the vaccine for the pandemic does not mean the hurts have been healed. That's when the real work will begin. Amen.
shall stand, say to God, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate to the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the cloud. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The prayers of the people are form two. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, the most Reverend Michael B. Curry, a presiding bishop, the Reverend Kevin S. Brown, a diocesan bishop, and for Bruce Lomas, a priest, John Green. Senior Warden, Vestry Group, Brian, Leticia, Barbara, Manise, Ray, and Ralph. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, Christ Church, Delaware City, the Reverend Arlene Barbro Pfeiffer, Pastor. And for this gathering, and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. We pray for those in the military, Christopher Dawson, Justin Gary, Jamie Grimes, Russell R. Hudson, Russell Knob, Amber Mabry, Jared Farmer, and Bruce Ferrell. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. We pray for those who are sick and or with other issues. John Macy, Bill Shaw, Shirley Bowden, Emma Fisher, Kathy Russ, Ava Marie Van Der Veen, Joe Kowalski, Jimmy Walters, Bernie Fulker, Linda Flynn, Paula Swift, Regina Miller, Jesse Miles, Julia Wiles, and Rich Bowen. For long term and restored health, Dale Napa and Barbara Mogul. For good health in older years, Gretchen Fogus, Molly Rebel, Mary Mills, and Joan Nye. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or seek for knowledge of Him. Pray that they may find and be found in Him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Father John Husanya. Pray for those who have died. I ask your thanksgivings for the birthday of Donna Fraser and Kelly Taylor, baptism of Karen Krause, anniversary of Preston and Shirley Bowden. 
Praise God for those in every generation for whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you. My own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give us the peace and unity of thy heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, for socially distant, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. You, you can stand and say hi to one another. You just can't touch one another. All things come in the old Lord. The great thanksgiving is found inside your bulletin leaflet, Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, Proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Oh, 
holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of God in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has caused for your bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, Forever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance. Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Christ and that it happened. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Okay. The waiter. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessed God Almighty the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you. We remain with you always. Amen. As you can see in the bulletin, the yard sale is canceled for this fall. We figured we have to have it outside. We could have no food. We don't want to expose all of our parishioners to everything that is coming in, touched by so many different people. And there's no way of controlling it outside of people wearing masks or not wearing masks. So we figured for everybody's health, we could better postpone it. We may have it 